Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us greet one another. The Lord be with you, and also with you. I was glad when they say unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the Almighty Savior. God is spirit. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the collect together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 This morning, let us sing this song to rejoice in God's love.
your throne we worship you We b o 
Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Shalom and peace of the Lord be with you. And we'd like to welcome every one of us to join in our online worship service this morning. Before we go into the Word of God, a couple of reminders for all of us. Number one is this, that every Tuesday, we continue on with our prayer meeting, Power Station, from 7 to 10 p.m. online. Please do get the Zoom link from our church office, from the church staff, so that you can be part of this very important time that we need to gather together to pray. Second thing is this, that as you observe on the screen, there is uh, the bank account, number of Desert Stream Anglican Church as well as a boost QR code. We'd like to encourage all of us to continue to bring in your giving to the church as part of our worship unto the Lord. I'd like to remind all of us that this boost QR code is also available online if you happen to miss it during the broadcast of this service. You can find it in our e-bulletin. Let's come to the Lord in prayer before we hear His words. Father, we want to thank You. We want to praise You for You are a true and living God. Lord, You still speak to us today. And therefore, we come to You expecting to hear from You, not just hearing the word that is coming out from the Scriptures, but that, Lord, we might receive it and hear it in our spirit. Father, we just ask of you, O God, that may you grant us the spirit of revelation and spirit of understanding this morning. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for all that you are doing in our lives. We thank you for your protection, for your provision in each and every one of our lives. We give you all the honor and glory, Lord. We open our hearts to you to hear from your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going on on a series about the spirit and the flesh. Now this morning, I'd like to share with us about born of the spirit. What does it mean to be born of the spirit? Sometimes we hear this phrase being repeated and being preached, being shared, and sometimes we may even use it ourselves. Born of the spirit or born again. Let us look at uh, John chapter 3, verse 3 to 12. In John chapter 3, Verse three, to, verse 3 to 12, this is the account about Nicodemus, a Pharisee, who came to Jesus to talk to him, to ask him questions, to actually have a dialogue with him. And this is what Jesus answered him when he was asking, how can we enter into the kingdom of God? Jesus answered him, let's read together. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I tell, I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? See, this whole concept about being born again. And here, Jesus started, started off by saying that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God unless he is reborn. So Nicodemus, of course, was very surprised when he heard those words. How can a man, when he has grown up to be an adult, enter into his mother's womb for the second time to be born again? And, and, and Jesus continued to, uh, to explain, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot 
enter the kingdom of God. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You see, Jesus is stating it was something that is very obvious. It is an obvious principle. If the kingdom of God is spirit, if God is spirit, as we approach God, it is our spirit who is approaching this God. And when we are saved, it is our spirit that is being redeemed. So the born again experience is something that, 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 is, that happens in our spirit because God's kingdom is spiritual. Unless we are born again, we cannot even begin to understand what this kingdom of God is all about. Now Jesus said these words and said that unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus was quite surprised. He says, how can it be? How can this thing be? And Jesus answered, are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? As I shared with us before, for those of us who are in Desert Stream Anglican Church, and, and I believe that Jesus was not being sarcastic. He was saying something that he was expecting Nicodemus to understand. He was sharing something that a Jewish teacher like Nicodemus would have no problem in understanding. You see, when Jesus says, one, unless one is born of water, what does it mean? Of course, we know that water often refers to the cleansing water, uh, our, our sin being cleansed. And uh, more commonly, it's being referred to uh, baptism. You see, baptism is a, is a Jewish concept. Baptism, in the time of John the Baptist, even before Jesus, uh, even before Jesus appeared on the scene, so to speak, John the Baptist was baptizing uh, people, those who, who repent and turn away from the sin. And where does this concept come from? You see, in, in, uh, in the Jewish uh, tradition, if a Gentile wants to worship the God of Israel, they can do so by being converted into Judaism, by going to uh, water immersion. They will go into, the, go into water, immerse in the water, and they come up. In so doing, they are proclaiming, I forsake all my past worship. I forsake all my past. I leave it behind and I turn my face towards the God of Israel. From this day forth, I worship the God of Israel and God of Israel alone and only the God of Israel. I forsake all other altars. I forsake all other spiritual worship. I serve no other gods. I serve no other master. But this, the God of Israel, is whom I serve now. Now that is a Jewish tradition. These are very Jewish things. So Nicodemus shouldn't have any problem understanding that. The second thing is this, that he must be born of spirit. And Jesus went on to explain because Jesus uh, felt that perhaps uh, Nicodemus had a bit of problem understanding what does it mean to be born of the spirit. That means to allow the Holy Spirit to do a deep renewing work, a deep regeneration work in the lives of the person. We can look at that a little bit more this morning. So, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, before we enter into the spiritual kingdom of God, before we become part of the, the, the kingdom of God, two things must happen. Number one, we must be born of water. We must stand before God and say, I forsake all others. You know, just like getting married. Huh? Uh, you know, part of our marriage vow in the... Uh, uh, in our Anglican holy matrimony, they said, I forsake all others, you know, that and I've conducted quite a few uh, weddings, so I remember those words that I will ask, you know, the, the bride and the groom, would, would you forsake all others, you know, forsake all others and say, no, I will not set my eyes on, uh, you know, for the, for the bride, I was, they would say that, you know, I will not set my eyes on another man, right? Uh, the way that I set my eyes on my husband, and so, so would the, the bridegroom uh, say, I will not set my eyes on another, another woman the way that I set my eyes on you. So forsaking all others. 
it is it is a covenantal relationship. Being being baptized is not merely going through the process, going through the ritual. It is entering into a covenant with God. Remember, baptism is originally a Jewish concept, not uh, not originally a Christian concept. So when we go through the 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 reborn of water. We need to forsake all others, all other gods, all other form of worship, idols, our our dependence, our uh, what we rely on. We we, we we leave them as secondary. We leave them entirely. We say that God, you are our prime. You are my primary trust now. You are my not just primary trust. Huh? You are my only trust. To you only, I offer my worship. And my religion. Secondly, to be born of the Spirit, as I said, allow the Holy Spirit to do a new work, a new work in us. Therefore, when Jesus came to John the Baptist and he asked to be baptized, and John the Baptist said, "You should be baptizing me, not me baptizing you." And Jesus said, "What did Jesus say? Go ahead and do it, so that you may, see. so that the uh, uh, the requirement of righteousness may be fulfilled." So when Jesus went through that, what did Jesus was actually demonstrating to all of us? He went through the baptism. He is saying that my father, my father is the one whom I will pledge my allegiance to. To you only, I will, I will, I will, uh, I will uh, obey. I will, I will only hear your words and obey you and you alone. And remember at the baptism of Jesus when he came out from the water. The Holy Spirit descended upon him again. Uh, Recall such as this was recorded for our benefit, my dear friends. Right? It is not trying to understand how come the Holy Spirit did not came upon Jesus. Where was the Holy Spirit before the, he came upon Jesus? It was recorded for our benefit because remember what Jesus said. Jesus said that I need to go through this baptism so that. All requirements of righteousness may be fulfilled, and when we read that record of the baptism of Jesus, we see this truth being demonstrated. He needed to go through the water immersion and come up, and his allegiance, his faithfulness to God the Father, his faithfulness to his mission, whom his heavenly Father has given to him, was immediately tested. Remember. After that, he was taken by the Holy Spirit into the desert for forty days of the fasting, and he was tested by the devil. And he has made that promise. He has made that commitment that it is my Father's mission. It is my Father's work that I will do. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's move on a little bit, a uh, little bit more quickly. Reborn is a Jewish concept. Baptism is to renounce all other gods, worship, and altars to follow wholly the God of Israel to worship Him only. So, what do we, what do we need to, how do we need to, um, what do we need to do in order to embrace and lay hold of this kingdom of God, the blessing, the power, the freedom, the benefit of this kingdom of God. Let's look at Ephesians chapter one, verse seventeen to verse nineteen. This is what Paul wrote, and he says that that let's read together that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? Here, Paul was praying for the Christian in Ephesus. He said that the eyes of your、uh, your understanding being enlightened, right?、But、before that, he said that he prayed to God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that He may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
in order to understand God's truth, we need a revelation from God. Revelation is something that we receive, that we that we perceive, that we that we receive in our heart, that we understand in our heart, not something that is being taught upon us. Now let me give you a couple of uh, of my own experience. When when I was in the university, I uh, part of my one of the courses that I took was meteorology. Now I was pretty good in that, and uh, in the class. Uh, our class was small, and there were only about 16 of us. And, and, and I could interact with the lecturer and uh, answer his questions and all that. The knowledge has, you know, is so interesting and uh, uh, I, I didn't have any problem. So they came one day a test. And the lecturer said, since you're doing, since you're doing so well, this test will not be any problem. So test came, everybody did it. Everybody was very happy, including myself. I said, yeah, I got it, man. I got it. And uh, when the, 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 the time came for the lecturer to return um, the test paper to us before our midterm break, so uh, he, was, he was sitting there. He said, it's going to be the last lecture before our, our midterm break. And I hope you have a good time. So he began to call up name and he gave up the, the Test paper. The first one came and looked at it. Oh, I was so happy. Second one, oh, I was so happy. And there were 16 of them, 15 people, 15 names was called, and mine was the last one. And I was a bit, I was a bit surprised. You know, what does it mean? You know, the last one being called out. But everybody has taken the test paper and the lecturer say, now you have your test paper, you don't lecture this, this morning, you can go back. So each one of them took the test paper, very happy, everybody did very well, and came the number 16, that was me. And, he, and I walked up to him, he, he, he held his, my test paper in front of him, and he looked up intently into my eyes, and he asked me this question, what happened? He said, oh, wow, I was so shocked, I mean, what, what happened? And he showed me the paper, I was so shocked, not only I fell, I was at the bottom of the class. Now, how could it be? So he said that, what happened? I couldn't understand. You were doing so well in class when it comes to answering the question. You got it all wrong. And he spent time with me going through every one of my questions. That's why I was the last one. And after I discovered it, I said, well, there is this part, there is this corner in my understanding where I got it wrong. I didn't quite get it. I, I thought I have gotten it, I, I, I got it, but I didn't get it. So when it comes to application questions, now that is, that is the time that I flung, you know, I really flung big time. Of course, at the end of the day, at the end of the term for that course, I got an A for my meteorological one, a meteorology one. You see, what I'm trying to say is this, that sometimes it is not what is being taught to us, but whether or not the eyes of our understanding is open. When it comes to spiritual truth, our spiritual eyes need to be open. Our spirit need to be awakened. Therefore, Paul prayed that, that the Father of glory, God may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Without the Holy Spirit bringing heavenly wisdom, spiritual revelation, we will not be able to get it. And the next thing he says is that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You see, Paul didn't pray that your eyes of understanding may be enlightened. He prayed that the spirit of wisdom of revelation may be given to you. That when it is given, that your eyes, your, your eyes of understanding will be enlightened, will be open. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we need that spiritual revelation from the Lord in order to pray effectively, in order to hear God's voice and God's guidance. That's what I mean every time when I say that, you know, do you hear God's voice? I'm not saying that, you know, do I hear the voice outside? I mean, during this uh, time, you know, we have uh, cars moving outside the, uh, uh, the building. I mean, you can hear the sound of the, of the car. I'm not talking about those kind of hearing only. Sometimes maybe we hear like that, but more importantly, do we, do we get here? 
Do we get it here? That will transform our life. Now, let me just give you a uh, 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 an illustration. I have with me here a pot plant, right? Now, this is a, this is a uh, root plant, right? So, if you observe, don't know you can see from where you are. Now, this piece of leaf here is a bit dry. I can feel it dry in my in my, in my hand. So, what do we do with dry leaves? Now, here's one thing that we can do. I got myself some uh, some water, right? I can spray on the water. It is water here. I know it is not very healthy. This water here has some mineral, uh, has some uh, um, necessary uh, plant medicine. I can spray like that. Let me spray it up. I can spray like that. Ah, it looks very. Really, it looks shiny now. It looks very moist. But is it? Is that, uh, did, I, did I solve the problem? Did I solve the problem of this plant being dry? Of course, you and I know that I have not solved the problem. The problem could be in the root. I have forgotten to water it, which is not the case. I just picked up this pot plant from my house. And then, you can see this is another plant here that is a bit dry, so I spray some more. The more I spray, the, the water, after a while, the water, you see water now flowing down into the soil to reach the root. Now, what do I need to do actually to solve this problem? You and I know that I need to water the plant. I need to put water into the root in order that the water may go down to the root. And only when the plant begins to absorb, absorb the water, then it can infuse into the plant. Then, only then the plant will be healthy, will look not dry anymore. You see, sometimes we say that we want to hear the Word of God. Yeah, true. The Word of God is life. The Word of God is spirit. The Word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. Yeah? The Word of God gives life. Those who believe in the Word of God will have life. This is what the Bible says. So, now what do we do? Sometimes we look at we look at the situation, we look at a person's life now. Nah, this person, this area in his life or her life, there will be a bit of problem. And I look at the scriptures. I tell you now, nah, this is what the scripture says about your behavior, about what you are thinking and what you are feeling. Don't think like that. Don't do that. What were we doing? What are we doing when we say that? We are just getting the water to spray on the leaf. Don't do that. You know, I, I'm trying to solve this dry leaf problem here, okay? Right. So, what is, how is the Word of God effective? The Word of God is only effective when the spirit of wisdom and revelation comes upon our lives and begins to bring and infuse into our spirit, into our lives in order that we may receive God's truth and respond accordingly. My dear friends, that is the reborn experience. That is the born-again experience. This born-again experience has very little to do a decision to follow Jesus, the one time, the first time decision to follow Jesus. This has to do with being immersed in the Holy Spirit. This being, this this has got to do with being, being, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Let me just sum it up for us. How do we lay hold of the kingdom of God and all its power? Number one is start with revelation, the revelation of righteousness, of holiness of God, the righteous, the, the revelation of our own offense before God. This revelation will bring about conviction of sins and holiness without a deep revelation. As I say that if somebody has living has a, has, a, has a troubled life, we look at the part of his or her life and say that look, you need you need to repent. This is wrong. If there is no conviction, okay, you say I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Right? Uh, you, you ask me to say this, say it out, right? to say to Jesus that I uh, forgive my sin because I have cheated my boss, 
uh, okay, I, I said it lah. Uh, uh, Jesus, forgive me because I've cheated my boss. But in my heart, if there's no conviction, uh, in my heart, I said, my boss is so rich, uh, cheat with him a little bit, never mind. Uh. Even though I said it, does it amount to true repentance? It doesn't amount to true What do we need? We need to ask for the Holy Spirit to convict the heart. Number two, it will bring to repentance, as I mentioned. Revelation brings conviction. Conviction brings to true repentance. Now, when that happens, that will be the beginning of the reborn experience. Number three. Number four, well, after we've been reborn, what do we need? How do we continue in this spiritual worship? We need revelation. We need the spirit of wisdom, revelation, that our eyes of understanding may be enlightened, as Paul has mentioned. Deeper spiritual understanding will help us to make wise choices. Deeper spiritual understanding will lead us into deeper transformation of our own lives. We all know that when we become Christians, our life does not immediately become perfect. In fact, it is just the beginning of a journey of being sanctified, that is being made clean and made holy and being mature as a person, as a creature of God, as a new creation. Right? We always talk about new creation. What does it mean? It is a new beginning. Basically, it is a new beginning. It is, it is a reset. It is a restart. It is another chance for us to walk our life in our relationship with God. Renewal, right? With that revelation, after we become Christians, with the revelation that comes from the Spirit of God, then the renewal would happen. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, a verse perhaps some of us are quite familiar with. Let's read together. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do we actually know what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God? Only when our eyes of understanding is being enlightened. Paul here described it as being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Renewal will come. In Ezekiel 36, verse 25 to verse 28, let us read together. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statue, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your father, fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. You see, this is what God has prophesied through the prophet Ezekiel. He said there will come a time that I will sprinkle clean water on you. I will cleanse you from, I will forgive all your sins. I will cleanse you from the consequences of your sins. That has come about because of your idolatry. So, the water immersion, right? The water immersion, symbolic of somebody going into the water and forsaking all other idols and making that decision and say again, God of Israel, to you alone do I trust. And I give you a new heart and I put a new spirit within you. This new spirit is God's spirit. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You see, even in the Old Testament, God was saying that, if I, if I give you the statue, I think if I give you some laws, if I just sprinkle on you, and ask you to walk in it, you are not able to, to, uh, to do that. You need to have my spirit in you. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, when we learn how to be continually renewed and rejuvenate by the Holy Spirit in our life, only then we will learn how to walk in God's statue. Remember this plan. Now, before I came 
right? I clean the leaves of the plant because it was quite soft. And, and in order for this plant to grow healthily, I can't, I can't every time try to, you know, put some water on it, make it look moist. What I need to do? I, as I mentioned just now, I need to put the water into the soil. Allow the plant to absorb it. Allow, allow the water to infuse into the plant. Only then, the plant will be able to grow healthily, will be able to exhibit, you know, its glory. And so it is with our lives. When we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, just as the water infused into the plant, the Spirit of God begins to infuse into every part of our being, our mind, our emotion, our will, and begin to bring that change and begin to, 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 to draw us closer to, the, to obedience and to faithfulness unto God. Next, restoration. When we begin to, to be transformed in this way, to, to walk in that reborn experience in the spirit, Restoration will come. Let's continue to read Ezekiel 36, verse 29 to verse 30. He said, I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and the increase of your fields, so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Thus says the Lord God, on the day that is verse 33, verse 35, it thus says the Lord God, On the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also enable you to dwell in the cities, and the ruins shall be rebuilt. The desolate land shall be tilled, instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. So they will say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when the Holy Spirit caused a change within us, it changes everything in our surrounding, in our, in our atmosphere. It is a process. There are lessons that we need to learn. There are, there are, there are, there are, there are way of the Spirit that we need to learn to walk in. Lastly, revival. In Ezekiel 36, 36, then the nations which are left all around you, then the nations around, not just Israel, not just Christian nations, then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruined places and planted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. Amen and Amen. The ultimate fulfillment of the prophecy of the Messianic age in Ezekiel chapter 37 follows, which I spent quite a bit of time uh, sharing with us on Tuesday uh, during our power station. I'd like to encourage all of us, if we would like to see change in our own lives, in our family, in the city that we live in, in our and in, the, in our nation that we live in, and also even in the nations of the world, let us keep seeking that one encounter with the Lord, to allow Him to enlighten the eyes of our understanding, allow our spirit to be awakened, to be made sensitive towards His Spirit. Then when we receive that deep revelation from, from Him, then we will be able to walk in His ways and walk in the power and the blessing of the Kingdom of God. Not only our lives will be changed, our surrounding, our atmosphere will also be changed. Let us spend this time responding to, to the Lord. As we pray, we also want to in encourage you to allow the song that we are uh, bringing in a little while, we are singing in a little while, to be, to be your encouragement. Because when the Spirit of God begins to change,
begin to bring that change in us, it changes everything. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you. We want to praise you for your faithfulness. I want to thank you for your word, whose life, whose spirit. And we pray the Lord, would you teach us how to walk in the way of the spirit. Lord, we pray that, oh God, that may we continue to experience that process of being renewed and reborn in the spirit. Because that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Because you are spirit, we can only worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we just pray, oh God, that as today we come before you, if we have still idols in our hearts, in our lives, if there are those who, those that we have leaned on, those that have become a substitute of you in our lives, today we want to come before you and we want to say that we want to lay it down. We want to forsake all others, all idols, all worship, all altars, and we choose only to follow you and worship you. Father, we just pray, O oh God, that may you convict us in our heart of what is righteous, what is holy, not just in our mind, but in our spirit. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us in Jesus' name. Amen.
Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen.